Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we are deploying a Django application on Microsoft Azure. Um, this is the second video of this tutorial. In the last video we changed our Django code so it's ready for deployment. And in this video we're going to push our code to GitHub with Git. There are two prerequisites for this video. Uh, please make sure that you have Git installed on your computer which you can do very easily by going to their website. I will leave the link in the description. And also make sure that you have an account on GitHub. Now, both these things are completely free and easy to do. Um, so yeah, let's get started with this video. So in today's video, we're gonna focus on four key tasks. We're gonna start off by configuring Git inside of our project so we can actually use Git. Next, we are going to save our code in a Git repository, which will be a repository on our local computer. Um, then we are going to create a GitHub repository, which uh, enables us to store our code online. And then we're going to push our code from our local computer with Git to GitHub. And that will complete all of the tasks for today and make sure that our code is available both offline and online. And I will also show you how you can do that process after you've done it the first time. So let's get started. So let's start by initializing Git inside of our project. Um, yeah, for the sake of simplicity, I've added all of the commands that we need to enter uh, in a simple notes file inside of our project. I'm going to delete that after, so don't worry about that. Uh, the first thing we need to do is um, configure our username. So I'm going to enter in my terminal git config global user.name, and then here it's going to be my name. All right, next up, I'm going to configure my email address. So I'm going to do global user.email and it's going to be equal to my email address. There we go. The next two, I'm just going to uh, put them in there as well is git config global push dot default matching and git config global alias dot code checkout and now with the last command we can initialize it by stating git init and the first thing you will immediately notice is that all of my files here are becoming green and the reason that they're becoming green is because these files are new uh, and have not been pushed into our uh, Git repository. So every time something is new, it will show up green with you. And every time that it, a file has been modified, but it is already in your repository, it will show up as um, orange with the M from modified. And when you go to the folder of your project to your computer, you will notice another thing. You will see that there is a new hidden folder called .git. And this is actually the repository that we've just created and where my code will be stored on my local computer before we bring it to GitHub. So our next step is adding all of our files into our Git repository, because right now they're not currently in there. So uh, I'm going to start by just deleting my notes folder because I'm not going to need that one. I can add all of my um, files into that Git repository by stating git add and then a dot, which means that we're going to add everything. Okay, the next thing that we need to say is git commit dash am, and then we need to provide a message. And this describes why you've made a change to your code. So um, I'm just going to say this is my first commit. And this is also the description that will show up in GitHub eventually. So you can kind of see why different changes have been made to your code. Okay, and you can see now that there's a long list of files that have been added to my Git repository. And you will also notice that the uh, files here are no longer green because they have been added. So they're no longer untracked changes, uh, they're just all tracked. You will see that I made a small change to my form as a PI file. I did nothing else but add some spaces. And when I save it, you will see that it turns up as uh, kind of an orange color and it will state that it has been modified. Well, how do we then process that change again to my local Git repository? Very simple, we do the same, it's git add git commit dash am, and I can say changed my form. Okay. 
And then you can see that this one file has changed and it will no longer show up as orange. It is now time to create a repository where we will store our local code. Um, so when you go to GitHub, you need to log in. You can go to repositories. There you will see a list of all of your existing repositories if you have any. Um, and what we're going to do is create a new one. And in this window, it will ask for a repository name. So I'm going to say Django Deploy on Azure. And I'm just going to state this is for a tutorial where I deploy a Django app Azure. And I'm going to leave it as, as public. If your code um, has particular things in there that you don't want others to see, I recommend you set it on private. Same if you're actually going to deploy these uh, apps to keep them. Um, in production, I would really recommend just doing it privately. But for this sake, I'm going to go for public. Um, yeah, you can add a readme file if you want to add more information about your project, um, but all of these things are not really required for us now. So I'm going to click on create repository. I'm going to give it some time. And here you will see um, the way that GitHub recommends that we actually publish our code. So we can create a new repository on the command line, or we can push an existing repository from the command line. Now we already have um, uh, moved our code to Git, so it's already in there. So we can simply uh, copy the code from the last code block, go to our code terminal right here, and just paste it in. And this should do the job for us. So you can see that it's going in there. And right now it should be done. So it's as simple as that. When we now go back and I refresh this page, you will see that your code is on GitHub. And you can also see here in the messages that all of these have a first commit, except for the one where I changed my form. So even if I go deeper into there, you will see that I changed my form as a pi, and that's the reason that I see this message here. And what happens if you want to make any more changes to your code? Well, very basic. Let's take the same example here. So I have a models.py file in Azure content, and I'm just going to uh, add a space and save it again. So my code is going to think that it is modified. All I need to do now is the same as before. I do git add. I, oh, I mistyped it. I do git add, and I say git commit dash am and I say changed models file and then I can do git push now it's going to push it up to github so we're going to give it a second it says that it has deployed it to my repository and if I go to my repository and refresh it you will immediately see the change so let's go to yeah you already see here change the models file and if I open up actual content here you will see that uh, here I still changed my form and here I changed my models file. And that is the way that you work with Git and GitHub and how you can get your uh, code up to an online repository. So that was it for the second video in this tutorial series. Uh, we configured Git inside of our project. We stored our code in the Git repository. Uh, we actually we created a GitHub repository and we pushed our code to GitHub and also showed you how you can uh, yeah, make additional changes. So that is all we need to do for today. Um, yeah, that means that we now have concluded the first two steps of deploying our Django app to Azure. We've changed our Django code for deployment. Uh, we've pushed our code to GitHub with Git. And that means that in the next video, we're going to create all of the Microsoft Azure resources that we'll need. Uh, and in the last video, we can deploy our code to Microsoft Azure. And that will be the final one. So thank you very much for watching this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. And for now, enjoy the rest of your day.